The very first question is going to be, how do they respond to vivid dreams? What does that mean, and especially in the demonic? I think it's going to depend on what kind of dream that it is, because often dreams can show you a key of what needs to be done spiritually. They also can be a key to uh, traumatic memory. So I don't know that we can answer that right off, but I would begin saying to the Lord, God, what is it that you want to me to know out of this dream? Now, if the dream is tormenting, the enemy torments. Well, uh, Lisa, Pastor Lisa is right by uh, the different dreams. It depends on what type of dreams, but the book of Job chapter 33 and 14 through 18 clearly defines that that's how God speaks to us. So dreams are the sleep language of God. Now, there are inner dreams and outer dreams. So sometimes you might have a dream that's related to something going on to you. That's an inner dream. An outer dream is could be related to something prophetic, something to come, a prophetic warning. Uh, and sometimes uh, the dreams are tormenting uh, or like a nightmare or you being assaulted or attacked on a dream. Mm -hmm. If any of those, if, if the assaults or like sexually attacked, uh, being choked or things like that in the dream, then you should seek out getting deliverance ministry. Where do you send demons and how does that person fill back up after so that they don't come back again? Now, some say, hey, send them to the place of Tardis. This is a place of hell, but they've already been defeated there. They can't even re repent according to Revelation 20 and 10. That's their destiny. Uh, but the Bible says that they go to a dry place. Yeah, yeah. It's what the word of God declares so, and if that is the case, uh, some confuse it with them transferring, they can get on you. All of that stuff is not true and not biblical. So they go into a dry place is where they go, where there's no inhabitants is what the word of God say. How do you, um, the other thing, how do you, you keep them out? Um, uh, the Bible is clear that when the house is swept clean, you, you, of course, you have to keep them out but deliverance let me share this with you deliverance ministry requires you to do something come on okay you have to do something that means that you keep them out by uh prayer meditation on scripture reading scripture worship praise uh maybe a fast if the holy spirit inspires you but that's how you keep them out. So it has to be maintained. So for an example, none of us in here just drive a car. If you don't service it, it's going to break down. Yeah. It's the same way with deliverance. If you don't service it, uh, you know, the oil gets real thick and everything. And you, you start it up, it smokes. Uh, the same way with the believer. If the oil is not changed uh, regularly in the person so that the whole because the holy ghost we got resides in us if you're a believer you're not possessed mm -hmm. you're not in complete control of them but it still needs to be maintenance it's mm -hmm. not automatic amen i want to say for our ministry and what we teach I, I agree with everything that he said and uh we for good measure um i did a i did a poll of people of where to send the spirits from different ministries with different examples. Some didn't say anywhere. A lot of people just say, come out in Jesus' name. Uh, I often, you will hear me say, go to the feet of Jesus. It makes me feel better. <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's fine. <laughs> and I do that as well, because I, I was taught by her, so. <laughs> All right, so this is an interesting question. So can a spirit hide objects or important papers from you? I don't think the demon picks up the paper and moves it. Somewhere. Right. <laughs> but causing you to be confused, have some memory issues, those type of things could be, memory issues could be from needing inner healing. There could be some other things going on that's causing you not to be able to remember well. A lot of times, um, just as Sister Emma said, it could be from unresolved trauma, but also in many cases, uh, like people have complained to me about uh, different things in their house. Sometimes when we have detestable objects or somebody's doing a form of hoodoo, voodoo, or, or witchcraft, or any form of thing against you, or they have amulets, 
that they are using and putting on the altar and you can't see. So one of the damaging things that many believers face defeat with is because uh, blind witchcraft is being done, which is witchcraft that the believer is not aware of or voodoo. Yeah, yeah. It's blind. They, they're not aware of it. They can't see it, but this is missing. Or somebody said, oh, this is moving around in my house. Well, but you got letters from uh, a witch that uh, your mom or dad went to in the right. house. Or Come on. You got some old trinkets or jewelry or something that they had. Sure. Uh, within the bloodline. So it could, uh, that can happen. But again, um, about paranormal activity. Look, I would just tell you, declare what the word of God say in Psalm 91 and tell the demons to get out. Amen. And if you got anything detestable in there, get it out of there. Yeah, and yeah. we can go on and on, but it'll take too long. <laughs> Cleanse your house. Yes. Ask the Lord to begin to show yeah. you anything in your house that needs to go. Amen. And open up them doors and say, get out. Amen. In Jesus' name. I can tell you, I, I just recently did that myself. I've been saved 41 years and been in ministry almost 35 years. And just as a refresh, I, I took Amber's class, which was incredible, How to Set Yourself Free. And, uh, and in doing so, I went through my house, and I was just on it. I mean, I looked through everything. And just stuff you wouldn't even think is still there, and there mm-hmm. it is, you know. Are we supposed to offer deliverance, or do we expect them to ask for deliverance? I think it can work several different ways. But in reality, the only reason I'm up here on the stage is not that I know as much of the subject as these guys but I come in from a pastoral point of view. And when Lisa talked to me many years ago about wanting to go into this area, I held some real strict guidelines because I was wounded in the early 70s as a young Christian by all the chaos in this because people would walk up to you and you got a demon and, and every, everybody had a demon. And, you know, it was just kind of some weird times. So I kind of, when we got involved in that, I, I think, that when we know you got to you got to answer to the authorities over you if your church doesn't participate in this kind of deliverance services then in in that realm you know you just leave that till God opens the doors for that or like I said we offer it uh, um, a little beyond that but to have a good answer on that Lisa I'm just going to defer it back to you because you know how we do things and you know how to deal with that because there, there's like say you walk up to people and you tell them they got a demon well the thing may manifest right then <laughs> we make a practice of not telling people they have demons we love to give our testimony and explain what god has done and typically he will open those doors because if you open up the oven before the cake is done rising it may fall Come on. and so we have to trust in the voice of the Lord yeah, yeah. now if somebody asks me about that of course we want to get them hooked up with deliverance and I don't I probably I may not say well you just need delivered I'm probably gonna say what do you think is causing this problem have you ever seen anybody about have you ever, have you ever heard of freedom ministries I'm gonna ask some questions where they're saying what they need to do and I'm just gonna say we love first We don't accuse people. So I pray for a lot of people at the baptism pool. And so I would just say, well, let the Lord reveal anything that may be going on. If they're saying they're having problems with anger, I don't say demon come out. I just say anything that is causing you to be angry, Lord, reveal it to you. And then we say anger, loose them right now. So I don't even have to really point it out or say this is what we're doing. We're just having a conversation. They're trusting me. I'm working with them and praying. I'd like to say, in light of that, when we started this journey, the first thing I told Lisa is so many people have unresolved issues. Yeah. And I personally believe it's because they don't renew their mind or like uh, Amber was teaching on. But at the same time, we know it can be. So I think we're, anybody we're dealing with, usually if we're struggling, there's unresolved issues. And that's where I like to start. And then it ends up wherever it ends up. Yeah. I don't think, well, we don't counsel demons, but listen, you don't have to look for them. They'll find you. <laughs> you, know, you don't have to look That's for them. That's a true statement. We're not looking under the carpet. Come looking, on. You know.
Yeah, yeah. You okay. don't have to look for them. They're going to find you. Yeah. And they're going to come where they can, you know, get the freedom from. Yeah. Because I'm going to agree with Apostle over here. It's been a lot of chaos and a lot of uh, damage. Uh, be, please bear with us. There's a lot of etiquette. There's a lot of protocol. A lot of things that have been doing, done concerning deliverance ministry, but the prophetic, the apostolic, several different things. And many people that come to us, Pastor Bernie, they're broken. They're, they have unresolved issues, yeah. like Pastor said. And some of them, it's just like, it's a hospital, but everybody is not responding to treatment. Yeah, yeah. I want to know I'm not doing it right. I want to follow God, but how do I know? And what if I say something wrong or mess up? You are going to say something wrong. <laughs> You're in good company. You are in good <laughs> company. <laughs> Uh, you know what? I know I don't want to take a lot of time, but some of y'all may have seen the video. But can you just tell them the very? You know, I'm gonna ask the very first time you did deliverance. Y'all gonna love this. It was a train wreck. Can you tell that just real quick? So listen to me. When you embark upon, for well, first of all, this is what you need to understand. Okay. The Bible says in Luke 10 and 17, well, let me just tear down some of the myths. In Luke 10 and 17, it says the demons, uh, the, the 70, they came back, they were surprised, and they told Jesus, demons are subject to us in Jesus' name. That's number one. They're subject to you, and they're just afraid of you as you are them. Number one, can you fail? Yes. Can they hurt you? No. Luke 10 and 19 says he's given us power and authority over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Yeah, yeah. And nothing he can do to us can injure us or hurt us. Come on. So get rid of that. But I'm going to go back to what says she wants me to tell you. <laughs> so the first time uh, when the Lord told me to, uh, to pray for this guy. So the first time he tells me... Um, I see this guy all the time, but I knew something was going on with this guy. I'm, I'm going to be real quick. I'm going to shorten it. But he tells me, hey, I want you to, to what well, says, son, uh, yeah, stop this guy. So I stop. Say, hey, talk, talk to this guy. I want you to, you know, pray for this guy. I said, oh, okay. I'll, I'll pray for the guy. No problem. So I stop the guy. I'm talking to the guy. Tell him, ask him, can you pray for him? And so as I asked him that, and he said, well, yeah, yeah, go ahead and pray. So I start praying, and the guy starts growling, screaming. I take off running. <laughs> <laughs> so, so can you fail? This is over 20 years ago. Can you fail doing deliverance? Yes. And listen. When you think and try to put a formula to it, because many of us come from that background where it's a formula. Do these things and you do this. But listen to me closely. Revelation, I mean, information and knowledge is only information and knowledge. And until it come, becomes a revelation, it does no good. Yeah, yeah. All right? Amen. You have to get a revelation of this. And so, boy, that stirred that compassion in me, but I ran first. And that's why I have a compassion. <laughs> but I took off running when he told me the guy's growling, making all kind of faces. I'm like, really? You sure you want me to pray for this guy? <laughs> I looked at him and turned. Don't feel bad. I was the gone. first deliverance session I sat in, and I ran out the back door, too. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, there is something wrong here. So. so listen, you can fail. Is it a right way to do it? No. When Jesus, I don't know if any of you remember this story, Jesus, there were some other uh, men there. They were casting out demons. And so many times the devil wants you to put this, like other ministries, into a sect. He said, hey, if they're casting out demons in my name, they're with us. Leave them alone. So it's not a right or wrong way or according to your denomination that it can be done. Because the demons are subject to you in Jesus' name. Come on. It's not a right or wrong way. Deliverance ministry changes Yearly, it, it, it could change in months and you can't impose the same strategies. You know why? Because you have to depend solely on the Holy yeah, Spirit yeah. 
when you're doing this ministry. And guess what? If you don't have compassion, because really it's God's compassion. Yeah, yeah. Deliverance ministry is a miracle ministry. Yeah. If you don't have either one of those things, then don't embark upon it. Now you can run like me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when you got into deliverance, was it a calling on your life or did you just want to do it? I don't think it, well, first, my, my ideal of it is according to Mark 16 and 17, the Bible says for those who believe. She'll cast out demons. Come on. Speak in new tongues. Yeah. And lay hands on the sick. She's part so of those it. are three yeah. requirements that they may be healed. So to me, every Come believer, on. Come on. if they're not doing it, has the capacity yeah, yeah. to exercise their authority in Christ because Jesus is the only one that resurrected. We have the, so when we do deliverance, we fight. Because of the victory has been won at the cross through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. why we fight. That's why we do the deliverance. And even if you're not, uh, don't formalize it and don't complicate the ministry. Remember, it's not you that's going to do it. That's right. You're going to tell them to come out in Jesus' name. Be, you're safe there. Amen. If you do it that way. Will, will you mess up? You will. Will you miss it? But uh, let me tell you this real quick. Faith, That's right. skill, and technique is what you need in doing deliverance ministry. And that comes over a period of time. Yeah. And experience doesn't mean anything because yeah. the demons change. Right, right. So grace and anointing is what you need in compassion. Amen. Because it's God ministering his love to his people mm -hmm. and his mercy to his people. Amen. As a pastor with a deliverance ministry in the church, it goes back to what the apostle said. You know, Mark 16 is what we're all called to do. But our understanding and putting that into action is different from church to church. Yes. Uh, we, we focused on it because I didn't see anybody else really focusing on it. And I had a real encounter with the demonic early, wow. early in my life. Wow. And I know there's a need, and need, people need to be free. And, and really, at our church, uh, I went through this moment where our staff, every one of them wore about 12 different hats in ministry. We had, I don't know, Come on. 100 different ministries at one time, <laughs> you know, but we counted everything we was doing as ministries. But the point is, I realized most of them wasn't getting to do what they enjoyed doing. They, we, they did the need calling. You know the difference between, you know, the need calling oh, and the high good. calling. The need call, I don't have to pray about taking the garbage out. Yes. Come on. You know, at home, I, I know to do that. But, but the, th the high calling is where you get fulfilled. Amen. But there's a lot of need calling to get to the high calling. But I wanted to my staff, I talked to them about what do you enjoy doing in ministry? How can I get you in the right place so you're fulfilled? And so Lisa, when I asked her, she, out of the clear blue, she says, I'm very interested in deliverance. And I'm going like, okay, is there anything else? <laughs> <laughs> you know, because like I said, when I first got saved, I didn't know any deliverance ministry that didn't need to be in a nut house somewhere. You know, I'm just saying that was my experience. When we come at it from uh, unresolved issues and, and terminology. See, I don't know if anybody's new to the deliverance ministry, but these guys talk this stuff all the time. Leviathan, you know, what? I'm like, as a pastor, I'm like, what? <laughs> What's that got to do with anything? But they talk this talk, and I'm, my mind would go tilt because I don't understand all of it. But as today, they've made it very clear. It's like any of us. You talk what you're used to doing. I talk yeah. cars with people, you know, big cams and, and, and low-geared rear ends on the car and stuff. But when they're talking about deliverance all the time, I'd be like, y'all got to change your language a little bit. <laughs> Y'all out there somewhere in this field of the imaginary people, it sounds like some of the video games our kids play with Wharf Dog over here or whatever. But, um, and, and so when you reel that back in, I knew there was a need. And then Lisa found a, a, a place where she enjoyed going after that. 
and then after us seeing deliverance, we had someone on our staff that was, we had no idea, and it was one of the first ones that really got set free. And when she was very public about what God did for her, then that changed everything for me because people who are trying to look like the part and do the part with unresolved issues, again, a lot of times it's just the flesh out of control, but sometimes there's that tick that's sucking the life out of somebody that needs to be removed. I don't know if that. And I would just like to say that Lisa and I both worked at the psychiatric hospital. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's all starting to come together. Glory to Jesus. balanced as good as anybody. Quick question on this one for you, Lisa. Uh, how many are we now in the one in 10 million? We are unable to keep count, but Amber and I, best we could tell, we are in the thousands. One would have been great. Hundreds is awesome. Uh, we don't know, but I will tell you this. Uh, Brenda Hagee invited me over to her house to meet somebody from Idaho. And when I walked in, she looked at me. I don't know this woman. And um, she said, I watched the videos, and I've always thought, if I see you, I want to tell you something. I'm one in 10 million. (laughs) Glory. (laughs) Woo! (laughs) Hallelujah. So the goal is, as each one of you all go and set people free. That's right. We were, we help. The Lord helps us to set you free. You set somebody else free. So that number just keeps growing. So we don't know how many people you are going to set free, but that just adds to the numbers of the Lord setting souls free. Amen. You believe that? Glory. Glory. I will say this. Every conference, there will be one person, and I don't know if she's here today, but there will be one person that we minister to that for me is worth all the work, all the money, all the time, all the everything. The next to the last person I prayed for at the last conference was sitting over here. Mm -hmm. She didn't, she couldn't come up. And the Lord sent me back there. I didn't even know I was on commission. But when she got set free, I looked at her and I was just like, oh my God. Every book I've read, every video I've read, every dollar that I've played, I spent thousands of dollars in this ministry. I have thought, you are worth everything. Come on, amen. Though, and it's not like we just want to check off these, which I love that question. I love that you're thinking about that. Yeah. It's not we just want to check off the 10 million, but every one in the 10 million is so precious. Why does the spirit of depression and loneliness keep coming back on me when I've been delivered from it? Oftentimes you will find that people that get set free, uh, there could be several answers. They could be opening up a door. I mean, if you're reading books, listening to movies, list, getting lies in. But more often than not, what I have found, especially with the spirit of heaviness, which embodies the, the depression, yes. is that there is an unresolved issue in a part of that person. So you can function just fine, and then a trigger happen, and it de-escalates quickly. Right. And it's not that we were talking about the age. It's not that that 25-year-old is depressed, but the five-year-old who was neglected or abused or abandoned that wound in there is like springing up yeah. now and again. And it's just right. like, I keep getting delivered. No, you are probably set free, but there was a deeper area of deliverance and a part of you that maybe you didn't have the capacity to trust God with it yet, mm-hmm. or you weren't willing to take a look at it yet. And so oftentimes it does look like I'm free and I'm free and I'm free. But no, you're, you, you are free, but there are areas that just need a deep, deeper work and depression and heaviness becomes familiar so if your five-year-old self got hurt or whatever and that's what you attach to then it becomes familiar to go back to that place when something happens when i want to run what do i do when i can't release what i want to on certain things it's when they can't release i just asked ainsley this question this week i said ainsley what do you ever feel like just quitting everything and just running away and uh, she said, yeah. And I said, well, what do you do to stop that? She said, I don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that helps anybody, but <laughs> coming from my 13-year-old, that's what she said. Yeah, fixed it. I don't know what a spirit is. Here's my, I've always called it the spirit of flight. Hmm? And I don't know if it's referring to that. But there are people who will, um, their response mechanism, their protection is to run. 
And yes. but the reason I call it a spirit is because my family, I grew up with that, and I, I can have my eyes closed, and if suddenly somebody feels like running away, I feel it with my eyes closed. I'm familiar because I grew up with that. And so uh, the best thing I can do, tell you, is to grab a hold it at the beginning. That first thing hits to run and fly, grab somebody and say, I am feeling like running away. I am not doing it. I would say, I am not doing it. And I would get help with that because that is a real thing. Yes, and yes. allowing the comforter, Holy Spirit is our comforter, but oftentimes right. we replace him with really bad replacements, mm -hmm. such as running away, such as going into a shell. And if we will allow him to do his job, those other things will go away. But I would get deliverance from that if it's a tangible feeling. Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah, in many cases, <coughs> something could have been missed in the session as well. And I just say this, that in three things, <coughs> excuse me, uh, maybe I need some deliverance. <laughs> um, you have to acknowledge, accept, and then give the Holy Spirit access. And sometimes it's like peeling an onion or even an orange. It could be layers. Yeah. They may need to come back. But it's the reason why something is unresolved right. that they may not be aware of or it could be in the bloodline. I'll just say this, many a times there are people paying for things that they are unaware of, that somebody done in the bloodline. Yeah. And that's the reason why that's there. I call them time release curses. Over time, they start to acquire, want to do some of these things. Sure, yeah, yeah. Because it's not dealt with in uh, the session or the counseling or miss. How can I effectively pray for others when I have areas of my own life to receive? Y'all, we do Freedom Friday in Katie's once a month usually. And so one month, I don't know, a couple months ago, we're, we go, we speak, we're going to do deliverance. And you know who got delivered? The whole entire team. Nobody in there. Praise God. So we go, we speak to people. But that doesn't mean the Lord doesn't reveal things to us. And that, So you just do it. I mean, you don't go out willfully sinning and keep doing that, but if the Lord's working on you, he takes you from glory to glory to glory. He may do some inner work, but we can still do uh, pray for people, still do things as he's working on us. Everything in Christianity is built on faith. And if you have faith for it, go for it. And, and when there's challenges in your own life, that's things you need to be free from because the devil probably tells every one of you at least one time when you get ready to pray for something, mm -hmm. they, the devil will point out your mistakes and your failures and where you come from. Uh, Absolutely. But we got to walk by faith. Yeah. And the it Word of God sense. teaches us that the blood of Jesus is enough Amen. to cleanse us. Amen. We're not the ones doing the healings. Amen. We're just laying a yeah, hand right, where he told us to lay hands on people that's right then he does the rest we that's gotta right. make room for god in those situations right. yeah. if everybody waited till they felt felt come on perfect to do ministry there would be no ministry anywhere because there was that's only right. one that was perfect amen. yeah that's right and amen. Amen. Glory. Amen. Amen. amen amen that, that goes right in. uh moses was a murderer <laughs> mm -hmm. and stuttered yeah, yeah. and had imperfections. But he delivered two and a half million people. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> yeah. So nobody has an excuse. Right. You, you have to do the ministry whether you're, uh, you have challenges or not. Yeah. Uh, because that's who he's going to use. Other than that, who is he going to use? One of the biggest uh, hindrances to someone breaking through or breaking free is you when you're trying to pray or you know that this person needs help I would say well you need to be free never get too big uh, to where you don't submit to deliverance yourself amen. number one amen amen number two don't let the enemy point out your imperfections because like apostle said over there only it was only one that was perfect but every single person that God used had an imperfection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are we reading the same Bible? Yeah. Come on. Moses could have said, hey, he said, I can't talk. He said, hey, what are you talking about? I created your mouth. All right, here comes Aaron. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> so you have no excuse. You still 
have to operate. You still have to do what he's inspired you to do. Don't let the enemy remind you of all the areas that there's challenges for you. Uh, you'll, sometimes you help them break through and you break through. God brings a deliverance in the area for you. You know how many times that I've been praying for somebody and I said, Dad, wait a minute. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Let me cough this oh, one Oh, man, come on. Uh, you know, so, but who else, who else will he use? Yeah. That's my question to you. Here, when ministering to someone who uh, you know has uh, issues and they have no physical evidence, other than the Holy Spirit telling you something specific, how do you end that session? How do you know that they're free? I would like to say that I like to pray until I feel the peace. Yeah. When the peace comes in, I know the work is done or a work is done. Sometimes joy will bubble up. Yes. If I'm praying for somebody and they've just gotten set free, but then they feel ashamed about it, uh, I will command shame to go and then the joy comes. So I'll pray for the yes. joy. On the occasion, this job is, you know, ministry when the person doesn't get set free, it's very frustrating mm -hmm. for whatever reason. It's not God's fault ever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But at those times when they're not yet set free, we may just say, okay, we bind up everything. We ask you, Lord, just to release your peace upon that. And we're going to go back. Maybe we're going to fast and pray. Yes. Maybe they're going to go and decide if they want to give up something that they don't, that they mm -hmm. want to give up. But the other thing is the enemy is the big fat liar. Amen. Write that down. <laughs> yeah. He's a big fat liar. And so the first thing after you get set free is you are not free. That's uh, the first thing he says. You are not yeah. free. If you hear you are not free, mm -hmm. you need to say you made that up. The enemy yeah. will never say that you're free. The other thing That's he true. will say is I'm back or you didn't get set free. Mm -hmm. What he's trying to do is get you to align with his lie That's right. so that it gives him power. Mm -hmm. And so That's if a right. thief comes in your house, are they going to announce it? And say, hey, I'm in here. No, they're not. So when the enemy comes back and says, I never left. You didn't get set free. He is not there. He is trying to get a foothold. We have to be smarter about that. But if you aren't free, you don't have to be fearful. You just say, okay, God, if there's anything you want to do in me, right. you just do it. I'm not going to fret and fear and give the enemy a place about it. Okay. This person is a business owner. They have an employee that clearly needs help. So their question is, as believers, do they have the authority to bind because of their business? I say you can bind it. I mean, you can't cast it out if it has legal there right to go. be there. But if something is acting out in this, if somebody's acting out in this church and it's actually a manifestation, we can bind it and say you will stop in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So I think my i change the atmosphere wherever i go Come so on. if somebody's in my office and they are manifesting acting out then i have the authority to say i bind that in the name of jesus yeah. if they're in my house amen so can a property be cursed if so how yes. can it be reversed yes yes mm -hmm. yes yes it depends on if uh, uh i call them land curses or land covenants a uh, covenant with occultism, witchcraft, uh, witches bought the property, warlocks bought the property, yeah. or um, <laughs> there's a curse on the land. In Deuteronomy 27, 17, right. they move the markers. So uh, it's a curse that comes on the land like that when they do dishonesty with mm -hmm. the property. Uh, they're a slumlord. Uh, they put people out. They, don't, they only collect rent, those type of things. So how it manifests is... Uh, the people that are there, they don't stay long. They always are getting put out. Or there's always a problem with trying to meet the expenses of paying the bills. That's just some of the manifestation okay. uh, of his curse. Uh, the property is cursed from defrauding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how would you break that? In our deliverance, um, made the book that we just did, there is a house cleaning and there are also renunciations and property prayers that you can say in that. So there are certain prayers that you can just speak over that. I had somebody that was, um, my, my property used to be used for parties and different things. There were some issues there. And so we just said some prayers, cleanse the property, everything in my house, anything on my property, get out in Jesus' name. So. Amen. So what is a deaf or dumb spirit? What, what is question? a deaf and dumb spirit? Uh, it's the same spirit that was mentioned uh, when Jesus 
cast out uh, that little boy. It was manifested in, um, in epilepsy. But I want to tell you what I hate about that spirit. It is, lives up to its name. It is dumber than a box of rocks. If you're praying for somebody and suddenly they look at you like, I just, I mean, they just don't understand. Have you ever been given somebody wisdom? Mm -hmm. I mean, real wisdom. And they're like, what do, you, what do you possibly mean? I just can't understand. That's a deaf and dumb spirit. Can't hear, can't understand. Sometimes it causes wow. deafness. Sometimes it causes muteness. But it also causes spiritual deafness. If you are in church yes. and you hear the pastor going, wah, 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 you never can get anything, it, it may well be the deaf and dumb spirit. You speak one thing, they hear another, don't hear it at all. That thing is, it's, it's pretty easy to cast out, but it is stupid. What is the best way to protect yourself uh, from people of your past who've dealt with witchcraft um, and particularly family members that have dealt with witchcraft? I would say you go to Numbers chapter 23 and read it in its entirety, verse 7 through 24. Balaam was raised up to curse Israel and the people, and he wasn't able to do it. Yeah. So how does the witchcraft? So my question to me, what, what I would say is most of the time, when people believe that the witchcraft is working, they've been involved or it's in the bloodline. How could any witch be, be more powerful than God? Come on. How? We, and the Bible tells us in Exodus 22, 18, suffer not the witch to live, okay, or the sorceress to live. If the Bible tells us that, where, where does that power come from? The power that we give them. So sometimes with the believer, there is what I call uh, a spirit. It's called Diablos. And this spirit whispers to them. It whispers to them. Psychological warfare. It whispers. It's called Diablos. It's a whisperer. You're not saved. Uh, we're going to, this witch is going to hurt you. So the question is, have you been involved with the witchcraft before? Okay, you haven't. Has your family? Well, okay, this is why that you believe in this. And many a times, they have seen the witchcraft take its effect. But I'll say this to you. Even in the book of Psalm 34 and 37, said he, he encamps his angels around us and uh, for the, around those who fear him. This is in Psalm 34 and 7. And he is yet delivering them. So how could that be more powerful? How? 